Today's connected digital world, it's easy sometimes to mistake the quantity of connections you have. So for example, the number of followers you have on Instagram, on Twitter, you can mistake that sometimes with the idea of real interaction, real friendships. While social media is opening the door to endless interactions, it also is blurring the line between genuine friendships and superficial exchanges. How do teenagers, young adults navigate this complex terrain? Are we constantly underestimating them by having discussions like this? And is it actually that because they grew up in the social media age with social media in their hands at a very young age, they're actually very adept at telling the difference? To get to know all of this, we'll bring you experts on the show. But first, some data. Firstly, a new study that was conducted by Talker Research. It was commissioned by LGA Electronics. It found that 62% of Gen Z wish that they could reset their social media feeds altogether start over again with three in four Gen Zers actually blaming social media for having a negative impact on their mental health. So see, there is an awareness already. The study reveals that those who experience negative emotions have reported that it only takes 38 minutes on social media before they start feeling bad. We had 2,000 Gen Z Americans who use social media. They found that Instagram and Facebook have all had a negative impact on their well-being. Over half, that is 53% reported feeling frustrated that the content on their social media feeds doesn't match what they want to see. Another 54% believe that either some little or no control at all is how they feel when it comes to what they see on their social media feeds. Now, research has also revealed that 16%, one six, only 16% believe they have total control over what they see. So, social media scrolling often leaves half of Gen Zers, so around 49%, feeling some kind of negative emotion, stress, anxiety. We don't want to overwhelm you with the numbers, but we want to show these numbers to illustrate a clear theme that's taking place. The Gen Zers, the youngest generation, are starting to feel the negative effects, but there is an awareness around what some of those negative effects can be. Today, we explore how to cultivate meaningful connections in an age where reality and the digital real often intertwine. Joining us to shed light on this entire topic, our first guest is Amit Batra. He's a renowned kids' life coach. We will also have another guest later on the show, but let's go over first to Amit to understand more about his entire approach. Amit, thanks for joining us this morning on the show. Amit, let's ask you, before we go ahead and get into deeper questions, can you tell us, if a set of parents come to you, they're like, we have a two-year-old child, only a two-year-old child, and they're asking you that, Amit, can you lay out over the next 10 years how we should expose that child to technology? So see, my point is it's entirely in your control how much exposure the child gets, doesn't get, what age they start at, what age they don't, they stay away from social media, for example. What would you say is the ideal route? Okay, so thank you so much for inviting me here. It's my pleasure to share my views on that. So for a two-year-old child, what we need to understand, most of us, how children are getting used to the gadgets, we are we are busy or we are handing over the phone to them. What we need to realize, a child, the earlier he gets a hang of it, the earlier it will happen. So first five years for me is the time when you should totally avoid it. Beyond that, now there has to be a limit on how much time has to be given. Now, a couple of very important things which needs to be kept in mind, and the most important of them is, when we are giving phone to the child, we cannot let the complete control be with the child. There are six, seven-year-old child, they are not letting the parent use that, and they are misusing it. In fact, many times what children are doing on phone, parents don't even, are not even aware. Children are setting their password on their phone. Right. How can we let young children do that kind of kind of thing with the kind of content children are getting exposed to today? So first few years is that what is critical, and you have to set some set some rules for them. You have to involve children in making the rules. They have to be there has to be simple rules. There have to be few rules. And one very important, uh, you know, one big mistake which many parent committers, they tend to, they are not consistent in following anything. It's like, when we say mama's mood, today mama's mood is good, enjoy, you use gadget, you do whatever, mm -hmm. and there is nothing. So any rule that you make, what is very important that you yourself are very consistent. Children will understand. But are you consistent in what you are teaching them, what you are telling them? No, most of us are not. Second thing with children, there are going to be some breaches. 
the sky is not falling on your head what do you need to be clear about that there are going to be breaches you need to be clear as to how you will be dealing with that so impose some simple penalties which should be pre decided rather so to give an example we just now there was a child who was totally addicted to gadget we created a simple penalty of 5 rupees can you believe it out of his pocket money 5 rupees penalty and after a month or two month the child is completely changed now so can we ask you uh, amit because i i think one of the issues when we have such conversations sometimes is that we can be very alarmist we can often not trust that kids will know how to handle social media and the phones when they do actually get them into their hands so right now a lot of the advice you were giving was centered around early childhood but let's shift the age group slightly let's talk about 10 year olds 11 year olds 12 year olds 13 14 15 onwards i want to ask you what's the age at which you would say full trust is necessary because that's also a very important quality an important bond that needs to build between a parent and a child when do you think that should happen children are not capable they are not mature this is the belief that we are living with hmm. reality is just the opposite the earlier you trust them the better it is for them what you need to do is to create the right environment now only thing with young children many times they will not understand their limit so what is required is that you know uh you have to have some control you have to exercise some control on younger children but as they grow you have to give them more and more freedom and more freedom they grow they they get the more they will be responsible for themselves we believe it totally different totally just the uh, we are doing totally opposite to that which is creating lots of problem in fact let me share this with you many time and i interact with lot of lot of parent and children children are they are using the gadget for the right thing but parent are mostly assuming that actually they are misusing the gadget for watching reels and so on and so forth that's where the lot of gap which come between parent and child so that gaps need to be bridged and parent need to be aware of it just by you looking at things you know something child was watching it was which he should not be watching once you have seen that there are the parent and you assume that every time he is using that hmm. many parents have that fear that is resistant against the technology and the reason is we are not very comfortable with technology some of us even fear technology or some of us don't even have time to understand but today world is moving towards technology we have to be adaptive we have to first you get ourselves used to the technology and then make sure children know how to find a draw how to draw fine balance between the two things amit let me ask you a tough question now uh no. let's 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 take our audiences to what for many parents will be in their heads the most horrifying thing for a lot of indian parents the most horrifying thing that your kid can do with a phone is use it to access porn for example so sexual content that parents feel should be outside the ambit of the children there are two aspects here i just want to ask you number one over here what's the right age to have a conversation with your child about how they can use the internet to perhaps even have a sex positive conversation where you don't in any way shame the child but at the same time you tell them that look the internet can be a dangerous place how should one go about that what are your cues and tips and what age is the right age to have that conversation okay thank you that's really a wonderful question see the first thing is there are many parents who come surprising you surprisingly you know what they concern is my child is spending 3 hours 6 hours on gadget my child is not studying the unfortunate part they are very few of them are talking that they may have access to the porn content that should be the their bigger concern or other kind of threat which is existing online right that is number one number two thing there are a lot of parental control uh, apps which are there if you know a little bit of, about technology even if you don't know on youtube there are lots of options which are existing on google this is technology era all this information is existing use that use yourself and that is that is very very easy to execute number 3 thing see most of us are worried about our children right 
worry is something which is not going to help your child what we need to realize one thing that cause that is causing maximum harm to children today is not the technology is not their bad habit parents your anxiety is your child biggest enemy that causes much more harm a child is like a small plant if you pour dirty water in, into the roots what will happen the roots will get damaged what about the fruits the behavior uh, you know the behavior the performance uh, addiction all this will come and if i have to tell you here the last thing see most of us believe as parent our responsibility is to take care of our children you have to understand your responsibility is to make your child capable so that he or she can take care of himself or herself mm. that's your mm. responsibility when do you trust them when do you make them independent and capable the younger they are when you do it the better it is for okay. them Amit, I must say some really, really sage words of advice you've given. Particularly loved when you said that actually the most harmful thing for kids right now is parents' anxiety. Everything else is actually second to that. So parents get get a hold of you know your own anxiety. That's the first step. Let me also go over to another expert we have joining us on the show right now. Dr. Jyoti Gupta is with us. She's the director and principal of KR Mangalam World School in GK. Uh, Dr. Jyoti, thank you for joining us here on the show. Doctor, we wanted to bring your perspective in because you administer a entire school and over COVID, there was a new issue that came in. You had to introduce technology into classrooms. There was no saying no to technology anymore. So I just want to ask you, how did you decide as an administrator that, okay, this is how much technology we're going to allow. Uh, this is how much technology we want. How did you decide to draw those boundaries? Uh, during COVID, it was absolutely essential that the children use the screen because there was no other way that we could reach out to them or they could reach out to the world outside. So there was a lot of usage of technology, you know, whether it was a Zoom or Microsoft or Teams, you know, Google Meet. So everything came out where, you know, there was so much of communication and conversation that was happening through technology. After that, also when we went back to the schools, we realized that technology could have a positive impact also. Hmm. So on, on learning as well. So uh, technology allows you a non-threatening environment to learn, one-on-one -on -one learning. The children can go back to uh, you know the concepts that have been taught in the class over and over again. And they don't need to ask the teacher they don't need to get scared of their peers, that they are going to bully them or uh, they are going to, you know, make fun of them that, okay, you've not understood even this much. So a lot of technology has been used in a positive manner to help the children, children with special needs, you know, where one-on-one -on -one tutoring is required, they need more time to understand. Um, the children who are, uh, you know, uh, I would say, ahead of others there's a lot of engagement that can be done through technology again so technology has been used as an enabler but when the technology is used and we give the work there's a lot of collaborative work there's a lot by the children uh, there's a lot of research work that is required uh, to be done by the children so uh, uh, technology is being used as an enabler but at the same time I uh, do agree with uh, Mr. Batra that uh, uh, the children have to be uh, counselled, the parents have to be counselled and they have to be told that uh, the use of technology has to be limited uh, to uh, particular hours. But children being children, you know, uh, forever children have always defied the rules and they've always defied the laws. Uh, in the garb of uh, doing the research or in the garb of doing some homework or research work, they do go onto the social media sites also because that is also very compulsive for, for them, I would say. And somewhere the parents are on the phone all the time. The parents are on the social media all the time. When you see the families outside also, uh, you know, the mother is using her phone, the father is using his phone. And the children, if they have their individual phones, they also ape 
their uh, parents and they also start using their own phone they want to be in touch with their friends all the time they want to see what the peers are doing they want to see what the celebrities are doing so it's a uh, you know it's a situation where if you do not give them the technology they will lag behind hmm. doctor if, can i just ask you can i just ask you you yes. already sound if i had to almost summarize your approach it's a, quite a tech positive approach you know your point is that tech isn't all bad there are huge positives to the way in which it's been incorporated in the classroom i just want to ask you one more question here uh, we're seeing more and more and this is actually a story we've heard since the beginning of time that it's not necessarily the school rule followers who do well in life right it's sometimes those who skirt around the rules that actually end up doing very well and i bring that up because we're now increasingly seeing kids who in class 10 class 11 class 12 on the internet for example read up about different stocks start investing Uh, that's one way other kids who just get you know very passionate behind an idea decide to build something there are now many many other roads to success beyond the conventional academic path so i just want to ask you doctor we all know that that's now something that's slowly growing i i know someone for example who's a poker player his parents were initially very upset what is our child doing but you know he's now shown that it is actually something that financially can make a lot of money so i just want to ask you doctor how do you balance these new roads that are opening up what is your advice to parents when to know that they should intervene versus this could actually be something interesting for our child so it's important both for the school and the parents to understand if the child has some uh, special interests and has some special talent not all children you rightly say are academically inclined or to go ahead and do higher education in uh, you know the traditional i would say uh, courses there are many who would find their way around so uh you know the professional game players earlier playing the games was a taboo but uh, the children who play professionally uh you know they earn money the children who design the games you know the good artists and the children who are good at coding and are good at imagining games they are st- they've started to make money i mean social influencers who uh who thought about them a couple of years back but they are making so much of money the youtubers are making so much of money so it is important for the parents to closely okay. watch what the child is doing and have conversations with the children in case the children have those conversations and i know you very rightly said the children reading up about the stocks so earlier we would say only read the newspapers or watch the news on television but the content uh, and the rich content is available all the time with the children so having those conversations with the children with the, you know the with the parents and with the teachers with the school with some experts is extremely important so ai uh, is extremely important today. right coding is extremely important today uh, web applications is extremely important so all these forces uh, the financial literacy the stocks the markets extremely important banking insurance So CBSE has brought in a lot of vocational courses into the education, into their uh, you know curriculum. So class six onwards, we start giving these vocational courses and skill courses to the children. It is doctor. This is this is such a riveting interest. discussion. I'm so sorry. We have actually run out of time. I especially as you were getting into how CBSE is trying to incorporate these parts. But it is so lovely to hear from you. To hear from someone who is so tech positive in their approach. to this entire issue okay let's take you our audiences now we hope you've gotten a conclusive way to go about dealing with this issue with your younger family members how to have conversations because that's what both experts said it's so important to have open conversations with your children 